And finally, we are going to calculate the output resistance uh, for the negative feedback system, the non-inverting amplifier in this case. And notice that I have made slight modifications to my circuit uh, to calculate the output resistance. I am first turning off the input sources. So I have turned off V in, the V in voltage source. And then I have uh, connected a test source at the output Vx so that my output um, resistance for the overall feedback system is going to be the ratio of Vx uh, to Ix. Uh, notice also a couple of, uh, not changes, but, but particularities of this configuration. And is that the error signal, given that my, my input signal is now equal to zero, is simply equal to minus my feedback signal. And my feedback signal is still beta times V out. Um, but notice that V out is equal to Vx because of the Vx connection. So I can also express this as beta times uh, Vx, which is going to come in handy since I want to try to express my equations in terms of Vx and Ix as much as possible so that then I can calculate ROF. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and analyze the circuit to calculate ROF. And I'm going to do it by applying Kirchhoff current law uh, to that output node right here. And so I'm going to notice that I have my IX current uh, coming in. And so I have also two other currents, which I'm going to label maybe I1 and I2. And by KCL, IX must be equal to the sum of I1 and I2. So if I apply KCL at that node. I end up with Ix is equal to I1 plus I2. And now if I take a closer look, I can see I1 is equal to uh, Vx divided by the series combination of R1 and R2. So Vx over R1 plus R2. And I2, uh, the current going into the output resistance of the op-amp, is uh, Vx um, minus the voltage uh, from the dependent voltage source, which is A times VE, A times whatever input signal you apply uh, at the circuit, so minus A times VE divided by the resistance, which is R out, the output resistance of the open. And I can rewrite this as Vx over R1 plus R2 plus um, Vx minus A times uh, beta times Vx. And that's just because Ve is a negative Vf, um, and Vf is equal to beta times Vx. And so actually, excuse me, negative and negative give me a plus here. That's basically the substitution I've made. Ve equals minus Vf, and Vf equals beta times Vx. And all that divided by um, the R out. So I can further rewrite this as Ix equal to Vx over R1 plus R2 plus, I can factor out Vx, 1 plus A times beta, there it is again, divided by R out. Now, uh, these are the, the two terms. Uh, remember, these were the terms for current I1 and current I2. Uh, but something that we can notice is that typically um, Vx times 1 plus A beta is going to be much greater than Vx. So basically, the numerator of I2 is going to be much greater than the numerator of I1. And also, uh, typically, for a normal op-amp, R out is going to be small, and so the externally connected resistors are typically going to be orders of magnitude larger. And so um, R out is going to be much smaller than R1 plus R2. And so if we have uh, the term of I2 having a much larger numerator and a much smaller denominator than the term for I1, it means that I2 is typically going to be much larger than I1. So that implies I2 is much larger than I1. And so I can typically approximate Ix to be equal to, oh, well, definitely equal to Ix, but to be equal to I2, which is um, that most of the current is going to go in, into the op-amp. 
Um, and so if I make that approximation, now I have ix being approximately equal to vx times 1 plus a times beta divided by ro, and my rof, which is equal to vx divided by ix, uh, is then approximately equal to ro divided by 1 plus a times beta, which is another important result because it means that with this particular type of negative feedback, the serious shunt feedback, uh, my output resistance gets reduced by an amount um, that is equal to the, the amount of feedback, 1 plus a times beta. Or approximately, you know, we can also approximate this as RO divided by the loop gain, a times beta. And so, again, that's another uh, important result. Um, and we could uh, go ahead and uh, calculate the effect on gain, input resistance, and output resistance for other types of feedback, um, for, for uh, serious, serious, shunt, 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 serious feedback. Um, and we will see that it's not always the same. Um, typically, whenever we have something connected in series, um, that's going to tend to increase the resistance associated with that node, and something in shunt is going to tend to decrease the resistance associated with that node. And so, for example, in this case, we have series shunt feedback. So we have series at the input and shunt at the output. And so the input resistance gets increased by the amount by an amount equal to the loop gain. The output resistance gets decreased by an amount equal to the loop gain. Um, if we have, for example, um, um, I don't know, shunt shunt, we should expect that the input resistance gets reduced and the output resistance gets reduced because they're both uh, they both have a shunt connection. If we have a series series, then uh, they will both be increased. But we can see that negative feedback always helps then uh, the characteristics of a particular type of amplifier. So the the series shunt because it increases the input resistance and it decreases the output resistance. Uh, it is helpful for voltage amplifiers. For example, a, um, a parallel shunt um, will decrease the input resistance and increase uh, and decrease, all, excuse me, also the output resistance. And so it will be uh, the best possible scenario for a trans resistance amplifier, for example, and so forth. I'm going to leave it as an exercise for you to go through and do um, another example. For example, the inverting amplifier. That will be an interesting example to, uh, to make. And, uh, and if you do, you will notice that even though it is a voltage amplifier, it does not have a, um, a serious shunt type of connection, um, but it rather um, has a parallel shunt type of connection. And therefore, you're going to see that the output resistance uh, is going to be lower, just as is the case for the non-inverting amplifier, but the input resistance doesn't actually increase. And that's the, the reason why, in the case of a, of a non-inverting amplifier, your input resistance, you can approximate it as infinity. However, in a, a non-inverting, excuse me, amplifier, the input resistance is approximately equal to the, the input resistor that's connected uh, externally. Um, so I'll leave that as an exercise for you to do, and um, I may post the solutions later in the uh, in the forum so that you can compare your answers to them. And uh, next we're going to keep moving on to uh, the concept of noise gain, um, which is also a concept related to uh, um, feedback and amplifiers. Thank you.